Hi, welcome to another One Chart lesson. Today we're looking at the song Colours, or one of my favourite colours by the Black Pumas. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. It's basically the one chord progression all the way through the whole song. But I'm going to show you how to do that simple riff starting. Now Eric Burton has, has done a little mini guitar tutorial on this, so I can see exactly the way he plays it, which is with his thumb, which is not for everyone, and it's not something that I really you know recommend to students to play with their thumb because I think it, it sort of limits your your speed and and dexterity in a lot of ways but it absolutely works for some people so this guy plays with his thumb now just because he does this with his thumb it doesn't mean that you need to use your thumb you can use a pick Floyd assisting me here in this lesson you can use a pick or you can use fingers and fingernails like I do. They're all pretty much the same way. You're hitting the same strings, you're playing the chord, same chord shapes. So whether you play with thumb, fingers, or a pick, this is the way he does it. So he plays, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with the thumb. The first eight bars on your one chart, which if you download, it's gonna take you through all the chord shapes for the rhythm and for the riff, and uh, show you how to do both the simple strumming or picking pattern at the start as well as the sort of bar chords and the, and the rhythm section that goes all the way through the song. So the first eight bars are quite simple and he just picks it like this starting on your 11th fret so it's up quite high on your neck starting on your 11th fret G string you've got your third fret on the on the G string 11th fret You've got your second finger on the B string, 10th fret, and your first finger can either go simply on the 9th fret E string or across the 9th fret E string covering all those strings, G, B, and E. So it's like this. Starting on the 11th fret G string, then play the 10th fret B string, then come back to the G string. So that's the first bar. Then you do it again. Then we move to the next position. Now before we, before we leave, I'm going to show you what these positions are by their chord names because it's easier to remember these, I think, if you know what chords they are. So this 11, 10, and 9 across the top three strings, that's actually the, the last three strings of an F sharp minor bar chord. So if you play an F sharp minor bar chord, and if you don't know your bar chords, Please click on the link below to my tutorial on how to play all your bar chords quickly and easily. It'll be very, very helpful and you'll never look back. F sharp minor here up on the ninth fret. It's an A minor shaped chord on the ninth fret. The last three strings are our first position. So it's an F sharp minor chord. The next thing he does is lift his finger off the G string and comes back to the ninth fret, which is why you have that first finger across the ninth fret Across all those strings so you can just lift that finger off and then you've got what looks like a D major shape up here on sitting on the I guess it's sitting on the seventh fret because it's up on 9 10 and 9 so this D chord has now been lifted if it's on the seventh fret it's now been lifted by seven semitones or seven half steps which if you count your notes up from your D string up 7th fret up 7 frets you get D D sharp E F F sharp G G sharp A now when your root note here for the D chord is actually an A note on the 7th fret of the D string that means that this thing that looks like a D chord is actually an A chord okay so that's your second chord that little second position there is an A major the next thing he does is lifts the finger off the B string. So you've got nine, nine, nine. And this is the one slightly different chord that needs a little bit of ex explaining. Nine, nine, and nine across those three strings spells out an E major chord with a sixth on the top. And what I mean by that is the sixth degree of the E major scale. So you can call it an E6. Or you can also call it the top three strings of a C sharp minor chord, which is this E minor shape on the ninth fret.
but because it's only these three notes of our C sharp minor chord, it's therefore got this note as the lowest note or the bass note, which is an E. So we would call this a C sharp minor slash E. So there are two different names you can use for this chord, an E6 or a C sharp minor slash E. I've put them both on the chart, but that's the chord we're using. So that's the, that's the third position. And then we come back up to a C sharp major, which is, means all you do is you go from nine to 10 on the G string. That's your C sharp major and then back to the F sharp minor. Now, to pick those notes out the way he does it, he goes like this. And I'm gonna do it with my finger now, but don't forget, you can use your thumb or a pick. Now, you'll notice that we're not using that top E string during that very first part because it's quite a simple little sparse intro. But get used to doing those positions using that top E string as well because after the first eight bars, we start to build that pattern, build that rhythm. And what it is, is basically your 16th notes. So you want to have a really light touch on the strings with your strumming hand and going one and two and a three and a four and a one and two and a three and a four and a one and two and a three and a four and a one and two and a three and a four and a and it, and that'll get you through this whole this whole intro section. Two notes on the eleven to start with. And then we start strumming the top two strings. Now, it doesn't matter how accurate you are with your strumming, whether you strum just the top two strings and just the G string alternating, or if you strum them all, doesn't really matter, as long as you have that chord shape right. Down to the C sharp minor slash E, up to the C sharp major. Then what he does is he adds the D string. As he comes back to the F sharp minor at the end of this uh, little progression, he adds this, this little uh, D string on the 11th fret followed by the G string 11th fret, and then he keeps going with the chord pattern, so it sounds like. All right, just adds that here and there. Again, it doesn't matter if you do that every time or not. So the best thing to do, I think, is to get used to strumming really, really lightly, so you can do this very gently. It sounds best if it's strummed very, very gently. So here we go from the top of the building section again, the second eight bars. To the A. C sharp minor, or E6, C sharp major. And in fact, if you wanted to add that D string on all those shapes, I think it stays on the 11th fret for all of those shapes. Let me just check it out. Yeah, you can leave that. You can leave that D string on the 11th fret and that'll make these little chords sound a little bit fuller as well. He doesn't actually do that, I don't think, but if, you know, sometimes when you're playing on your own, things sound a little bit emptier than you would like. Adding that D string note for all those four positions will help thicken that up. Once you get through that little intro, and I think, you know, he sings through uh, the, the first verse, then we move into the, the kind of whole band section, and most of it's keyboards and drums and bass, and so 
the guitar drops out a little bit. If you're playing on your own, again, you can just do these chords for the rhythm. Now, I've put these at the top of your chart on the right hand side as bar chords. So on the left hand side, you've got the four positions. And on the right hand side, you've got the bar chords you need, which is F sharp minor, which is an E minor shape on the second fret. Then your A, which you can also do as an A on the fifth fret, as an E shaped chord on the fifth fret. You can also play that using your open A string and seven, six, five, five across those strings. Then your E. And then for this last chord, you play a C sharp on the fourth fret, which is an A shape chord on the fourth fret, another bar chord. You can play it like that, or you can play it like that. So all my favorite chords All my favorite chords My sisters and my brothers Feeling like no other All my favorite chords That rhythm that I'm doing there, you can kind of do any kind of rhythm that, that you think sounds good there, but again, if you work off that one the and the two the and the three the and the four the and the one the and the two, that's a good base to start working out different kinds of rhythms. Basically, if you can do that sixteenth note pattern nice and lightly, so you've got good touch and good control over it, you can miss and mute different ones out of that sixteenth note pattern to make up just about any strumming rhythm you're ever going to come across. And that's pretty much the whole song. It follows that progression all the way through. It's a great song. Have fun with it. I, I know you're going to be able to master that if you keep that 16th note and a very, very light touch. That 16th note pattern and a very light touch. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. We're putting up new videos every week. Hope to see you back here soon.